Welcome to another video. Let's try to differentiate y equals absolute value of 2x minus 3. Remember that if the absolute value signs were not there, this is the easiest differentiation you can perform. Your answer is just going to be 2 because that's it. This is going to go to 0 and this is just going to be 2. But that's not the answer to this one. And it's not minus 2. It is something completely different from what you may be thinking unless you already know this. Now, imagine the absolute value function. It is always a v, right? So you see that there's no way you can take the derivative and get one answer. There's always one going this way and the other going this way. So what kind of function would represent the derivative? Well, we have to understand something first, that the absolute value of, let's say, x, you can rewrite it in another way, and that's what we usually when are not taught, okay? I think we should be taught that from the beginning. Okay, let's get into the video. Before we differentiate this, why don't we differentiate something that's a little easier or simpler to understand? Let's differentiate x. Normally, if we differentiate x, we get 1. But if we differentiate the absolute value of x, we don't get 1. What do we get? This is what we get. So, let's do this. Let's say differentiate. y equals the absolute value of x. The answer to this is not 1, and the answer to this is not minus 1. What you say is, you see this absolute value of x is really, 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 let the absolute value of x be the square root of x squared, because this is what I was complaining about, that I never learned that the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. They just told me it was plus or minus whatever was on the other side. What if there's nothing on the other side? What would the answer be? It is not x. It is plus or minus x. And you can see that plus x would work, minus x would work if you square it. Right? So, this is what we're going to differentiate because we don't know how to differentiate this, but we know how to differentiate this. And we're going to differentiate it using the chain rule. Nice. So what we're going to say is, okay, so we have absolute value of x is this because that's what it is. In fact, I'm going to remove the let. And I'm going to apply the chain rule to this. In fact, to make things easy, let's say um, we have, this is the same thing as x squared raised to power one half. Okay? That's your y. So let's do dy dx. dy dx, applying the chain rule, is going to be, we're going to bring this down, it's going to be 1 half times x squared raised to power negative 1 half multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. If we clean this up, this is going to go back to 1 over square root of x squared multiplied by 2, 2x. So what you have here is basically um, 1 over 2 times the square root of x squared multiplied by 2x. Well, we say that dy dx will be equal to, if we place 2x on top of this, this 2 cancels this 2, you're going to have x over the square root of x squared. Tell me, what is this? What? We said the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x, right from the beginning. So we can say that dy dx, let's write it here. We can say that dy dx is equal to x divided by the absolute value of x. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the derivative. This is what you get when you differentiate y and y equals absolute value of x. So this is what you get every time you differentiate x, I mean the absolute value of x. What can we do to this one? 
Now, it was easy for us to differentiate this and apply this whole x squared idea because what was inside the absolute value bars was just a singular x. So now let's try to differentiate this. We have y. Let's get this out of the way. So now we have y is equal to absolute value of 2x minus 3. Don't try to just copy the answer and put this here and put this here. It will not work because what you can have here is just a single term. So it's like you're doing a u substitution. In this case, because this is more complicated, we're going to say let u be equal to 2x minus 3. So what we're trying to do is that we want to differentiate y equals the absolute value of u. But here we can do du will be equal to 2. If we take the derivative of this, du dx equals 2. Let's put the 2 here. Okay. So this is the situation we have. y equals absolute value of u. We know this ha happens and we can use the chain rule. We already know that anytime you have an expression like this, dy du is going to be this. I don't want to repeat this because we could say, oh, u equals the square root of u squared. And then we follow the same process, but I already showed you how to get this. So we're just going to use the chain rule. So using the chain rule, we're going to have dy dx equals dy du times du dx. What is dy du? It's going to be u over absolute value of u. So it's u over absolute value of u multiplied by what is du dx. We already got du dx as a derivative of this, and that's going to be 2 times 2. So our answer is 2u over absolute value of u. But what is u from the beginning? dy dx is going to be, what did we say u was? 2x minus 3. So it's going to be 2 times 2x minus 3, 2 times 2x minus 3 divided by the absolute value of 2x minus 3. And this is the derivative of the absolute value of 2x minus 3. By the time you play with this often, you're going to get used to what the answer is going to be like. As you can see, it is basically the derivative of the inside times the inside divided by the entire function. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.